Hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Pond Professor here. I am in Michigan with Luke of Michigan Gardener and we are here for a pond renovation. <laughs> So you Happy purchased this home a year or so ago? Yeah, r place? roughly about a year ago. Inherited a pond that's not working. We have some common friends in the industry, mm -hmm. hooked us up together, and we are coming out today to start the renovation process. So what I wanna do is take a walk in back, check out what they have, come up with a quick evaluation of what we need to do to remedy all these things, to create a beautiful feature for you and your family to enjoy for many years to come. Happy to have you guys. Let's take a walk. So Luke, when we talked on the phone and after looking at this, I could see a few problems, but you had a few things that you wanted to address. One was mosquitoes. Two was the overgrowth of aquatic vegetation. Three was the lack of area for edible plants. Yep. Tell me a little bit more about the edibles. On the Emma Gardner channel, we really pride ourselves in showing people how to grow their own food and just kind of showing people how easy it can be to grow food at their home. And we know that not everybody has the ability to put in a raised bed. And we do know that some people have, you know, homeowners associations or places where they can't necessarily put a traditional garden. So I wanted to integrate that in with our home because right. on our channel, we show not only raised bed gardening, but also integrating edibles with landscaping. And because we have this new home, it provided a really good landscape for us to kind of mess with. Problem is, like you said, it's been neglected for so long <laughs> That there's no space to really put any edibles. Yeah. You know, if I was a wild forager, I might be like, oh, I could eat that, you know? But I'm like, I wanna grow like like some rosemary, some thyme, sage, oregano, maybe some fruit trees and things like that. And there's just no space for it. Yeah. The other thing that's not happening here, I didn't even address it. It's not running right now and it is late June. The pump system waterfall currently not functioning. So what I wanna do is evaluate what's happening. We brought out an entire new system. So the plan is to literally rip everything out, start over from scratch, but a huge cost in a lot of these things. Number one is labor, obviously, just getting a team of people. We have an incredible team that's arriving tomorrow. Certified Aquascape contractors from around Michigan are gonna come in to help us do this installation, which will be a lot of fun. The second biggest cost is gonna be all the stone. You have all the stone already. So what we need to do is basically drain the water out. We're gonna start pulling the stone out. And while we're pulling all that stone out, we're gonna remove all the aquatic vegetation. Just rip everything out. And I wanna reshape it. One of the things that's kind of popping out to me is we have this weird shallow spot over here. I think we wanna fill that section in, which would give you a little bit more room for some of your edibles. Mm -hmm. And then also just start cleaning things up. Maintenance is key in anything. If you wanna have a success successful garden, successful anything. You have to keep up on it. You have a beautiful environment for life to happen. We just need to control it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't wait. Can't wait for it to be controlled. What I wanna do next, why don't we just start by, by draining water. We'll kind of keep the dialogue going. And as we start shaping and start pulling stuff out, we can start kind of identifying a few areas that we want to address. And then from there, we can kind of just keep layering things on until the rest of the team shows tomorrow. Awesome, Sweet. awesome. I'm excited. All Thank right, you. let's get this thing drained, start pulling everything apart so we can see what happened. And then also see how we could keep these things from happening again in the future. what Sean just uncovered. Oh, it's a crap. massive mat of roots. So that's the main tuber for the water lily. And that's all the just fine little feeder roots that are going off. And they are just covered and they've just kind of floated up over up the boulders underneath it. So they started growing over the top, but they're growing off of all that decomposing stuff. And again, that's the eutrophication process. Just all of that material accumulating down inside and then it starts to build up on top of each other. Water gets shallower and shallower, and it's actually very conducive to this type of vegetation. That's awesome, but it's gotta come out. <laughs> Too much for this pond. So 
this is exactly the reason why we put skimmers and biological filters on all of our projects because we want to fight that eutrophication process. Now they do have a skimmer here. The problem is we don't know when it stopped operating. Luke and his wife purchased the property not that long ago. The filter system was not functioning. We don't know how long. That system is designed to actually capture all of that organic debris off the surface to keep it in check. If you don't do that, then it's going to accumulate down in the bottom and then you're going to be stuck with something like this and you're going to be trapped with a lot of maintenance. So it's much easier to clean out a skimmer box a few times a month where you're literally taking out a basket periodically that has all that debris versus trying to do something like this after many, many years of neglect. Again, maintenance comes in on anything. If you put in a lawn, if you put in a garden, if you put in a water garden, whatever it happens to be, you have to take care of these things because nature takes hold. It wants to start running and it's gonna start growing and it's gonna take over for you. If you have a specific look that you're going for, we wanna maintain that. So what I always do with all of my clients is I lay out right in the very beginning, what are the goals of the water feature? If you wanna have clean, clear water, healthy fish, with with some aquatic vegetation, these are the steps that we need to follow. If you want to put something in and just let nature take over, you can do that, but this is what you're going to expect. Again, this is a haven for wildlife. You're going to have frogs, you're going to have tadpoles, and you're going to have all different types of aquatic insects, but eventually it will turn into a marsh and then eventually a prairie. So it will eventually dry out, and that's because all this vegetation, these are all photosynthetic things. During the process of photosynthesis, we have sunlight coming in. Basically, it's an engine. It pumps all types of nutrients into the vegetation itself. But one of the byproducts of photosynthesis is oxygen we breathe, but it's also water vapor. So water vapor is actually going up into the atmosphere. There are a lot of old school farmers that would plant willow and different types of vegetation in wet, damp areas because it would suck all the water out. So it would put it back up into the atmosphere as part of the hydrologic cycle. But here in a small enclosed system like this, we don't want that to happen because then it's just gonna become a nightmare. The vegetation takes over, you can't keep enough water inside of it, and it's just this constant battle. So start with the right system, Start with the skimmer, start with the biological filter, the right pumping system, and you will have many, many years of enjoyment with your water feature. Calvary has arrived. We have our group of certified Aquascape contractors. They came in force, all of them coming from the local area here in Michigan. <laughs> Damn foot, we got Jeff Michaels, we have Corey Mann. They brought their teams. We have some incredible people here now. We also have Chuck out of the Canadian office who came over for us as well. And now we're really starting to make some progress. And because of that mini excavator, we could pull out some of those monster boulders that we found down in the bottom. We had no idea that these things existed as Sean was pulling out some of those big mats of all those water lily roots and rhizomes and all that stuff, it exposed some huge boulders down in the bottom. I want to pull those large boulders out and we're going to reuse them on the top edge. The reason I want to do that, I want to have as much water volume down in the bottom as possible and I want to see those big boulders. Instead of having all the little cobblestone that they had on the top edge, let's use those big beautiful stones up on the top edge and then we can have the smaller stone down in the bottom. So we're just going to repurpose everything that we have here and I know we could make this work. The other thing that we're going to have to do, we're going to use the excavator to pull out more of this debris over in the one corner and I want to get a load of fill soil to kind of change some of the shapes on the water feature itself. Reason being, that waterfall is coming in almost into the middle of the pond. I would never do that. But if you have a long pond like this and you have a waterfall coming in and the pump is on the one corner, it's going to short circuit the system. And what I mean by that is the water's coming into the middle, it's going to want to come in and go directly back to the pump. So this little backwater area here is going to stay relatively stagnant. So you can see that heavy vegetation, that's because all the sediments and stuff are gonna get trapped in that area because we don't have good water circulation. So now we have all this incredible growth. I don't mind doing that, but it's strategic. I'm gonna specifically locate areas like that to have anaerobic zones, to have little backwater areas. But in this application, 
it's not working for the overall design. We're gonna completely eliminate that section, change up the waterfall, so we have a nice, efficient, recirculating system. It's gonna give us much better results. What I wanna do right now, we're gonna pull out the boulders, get the liner out of here, so we can start reshaping everything to get the liner in, start reassembling this entire system.